I just wonder how it would be if maybe you had a misunderstanding with your spouse, partner, a friend, or maybe a family relative, or even a stranger. And you end up being so angry that the words that you've spoken over them will be written all over them. And people would be able to read each and every word that was spoken over that person. And every time you see this person, you get to see every word that you've spoken over that person. Hello my beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. For those that are new, my name is Nelly. Today we're going to be talking about your tongue, how it can be your weapon. Can you imagine if you had to see that person every day or maybe you've just made up with that person but each time you see them, you get to read the words that you've spoken over them. Maybe they've forgiven you, but you constantly see them every day. And each time you see them, it's a constant reminder of the words that you've spoken to them. We just need to thank God that he paid that price for us and he's forgiven us. The Bible says in Proverbs 12 verse 18, The words of the reckless pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise has healing. So your words are like a weapon. They can either bless or curse. Whatever you say to the next person, you must be very careful of the things that you say. You shouldn't say nasty things about other people, even if you're joking. Whether you're saying it to yourself or maybe you're saying to your friends, whatever you speak with your tongue can either destroy or build. Your words are like a weapon waiting to build or destroy. God warns us about the way we use our tongue. He can even warn us in a simple thing like a dream. I remember once I had this dream where I saw this blue cup. In this dream, I was about to get into my car when I saw the driver reversing back. Now, I was trying to warn the driver to stop because he was about to bump my car. But this guy just saw me. Instead, he still reversed into my car and he drove out. I was so angry in the dream that I said so many words. I cursed the guy and I said so many things. I just couldn't understand his behavior. I was trying to warn him in the dream, but he just totally ignored me. I woke up immediately. I knew that this was a warning dream. I knew that God was trying to warn me about something. So I decided to pray and cancel this dream. Immediately when I finished praying, I was like asking God, what is this dream all about? And he gave me John 3. At that moment, when I read John 3, I knew that God was talking to me. Even though it was just a dream, but to me, it felt like a conviction. I prayed over it and I went back to sleep. The following morning was a Sunday and I woke up and I went to church. When I was parking, the driver next to me was also parking. He got out of his car and he slammed the door open. I quickly had to stop immediately. If I did not listen to the Holy Spirit, I would have hit his door. I was so close that I had to do a short prayer in my car and I thank God for what had just happened. I believe it was not only my quick reaction, but the Holy Spirit had guided me to stop immediately. He got out of his car and apologized for not looking. I don't know what was going on in his mind, but I also told him, don't worry, I must have been the Holy Spirit here because I was able to even stop immediately. Not only his car would have been damaged, my car would have been damaged as well. It could have been an argument right in front of the church parking. So as I was walking up the steps, just about to get into church, the Holy Spirit said, turn back. I turned back and I realized that the car that was parked next to me was the same shade of blue that I saw in my dream. I was like, wow, this can only be you. This can only be you protecting your daughter. So this was God showing me that the dream that you had was a warning dream. Worse could have happened right in front of the church. Maybe we could have gone into an argument with this man. I don't know. So when God gives you a dream like a warning dream, you need to take it seriously. Don't just wake up and just leave. You need to rebuke and cancel that dream. You may never know it's maybe something that is about to happen. With me, it happened that same morning. I was able to defeat the devil's plan. When you look at the book of John 3, it talks about the tongue, how tiny it is, 
but it can destroy like fire. Just that verse was a conviction to me. Because sometimes we do ask God to show you things, but he won't answer you immediately. Even though it was just a dream, but the words I spoke became alive. God showed me in James 3. And from that day, I realized that God can tell you off. Even if you've just had a dream, your spirit will tell you immediately when you wake up. You'll feel it in your spirit. Don't let your words destroy you. I realized that the devil can make your very own words destroy you and make you believe the worst about yourself. We speak so many things about ourselves to our partners and even our children. Hurtful words that we cannot take them back. So don't let your words be a weapon. So the words that you've spoken with your mouth, you cannot take them back. Sometimes we curse ourselves without even realizing it. Whatever that you've spoken can either be a blessing or a curse. I know in other countries, they're not even shy to call each other the B word. And it's normal for them. It's like calling your child stupid and you're telling the child that they don't listen. When they grow up and they never listen, you start wondering why they don't listen. Because you are the one that have been planting that seed from the time they were small. Now they're grown up and they're still not listening. You've been watering that seed. So you need to think back and see where it's coming from. You will eventually know where it's coming from. Don't blame it to the child. You need to search deep down what you've been saying to that child. And that seed will grow into something else as well, maybe anger. And the very same child will take out his anger issues or her anger issues. They eventually have those negative emotions about themselves in the long run. And those negative emotions that they have about themselves, they spread it amongst the people around them, to their siblings, even their classmates. That child become so negative about everything even when they get married they bring in that negative vibe in the marriage itself and you wonder where it's coming from have you ever married a person who's negative about everything there's nothing positive that they say that negative vibe turns out into a toxic relationship and you don't see it because you're no longer staying with them their wives or their husbands are seeing that and it's up to your own bringing. Sometimes we may not realize that our environments can either break us or build us. If you are going to speak negative words to your children, you are raising up negative children. Rather, you need to tame your tongue. Because out of that same tongue, it can bring curses or blessings. Your tongue is very tiny and it has no bones, but it can break relationship and families. If you feel like you're in an environment whereby you're getting angry, maybe somebody's making you angry, rather move yourself away from that person. Stay away from that person before you say things that you won't be able to take back. It can either be your spouse, your children, or even strangers. Even when you're sad, it often projects to others. It's like maybe you're angry with your spouse, Maybe you said something that will really annoy you. Find yourself taking it out on your own kids. And they don't know what happened. Don't let this be a barrier and block your blessings. Because this could be a weapon. Your tongue could be a weapon. Thank you for watching. If this is content that you like, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you on the next video. God bless you.